This is Barry Zalma speaking for Claim School Incorporated with another true crime of insurance fraud story. This one is called An Englishman in Fraud. Of course, the names have been changed to protect the guilty, as are the places. Fraud knows no boundaries. It matters not at all where the person comes from. It matters only that the person has a felonious heart. Khaled Amir Fahalavi, born in Tehran, raised in Liverpool, England, and a resident of Los Angeles, California, USA, had such a mind. He lived in London and in Los Angeles. He earned a living making claim on British and American insurers. It surprised him how easy it was to commit insurance fraud. Khaled's life of crime started innocently enough at Heathrow International Airport outside London. He dropped a few extra pound coins into a machine and purchased a travel insurance policy from the machine. Although the trip was uneventful, he tested the policy by reporting the loss of one bag. With a minimum of effort, Khaled received a 1,200-pound check. An insurance criminal was born. It was so simple, money came to him because he asked. The Americans were a great and generous people. He began to study and improve on his new career. He learned about disability insurance, health insurance, accident insurance, liability insurance, and medical payments insurance. He made arrangements with Persian, Vietnamese, Armenian, and Russian doctors and chiropractors to bill him for medical services he did not receive. When paid, they turned over half the payment to Khaled. He was convinced America is the greatest country in the world. In two years, Khaled felt rich. His new business, with the aid of his friends and relatives, was a success. He invested his money in two chiropractic clinics that he staffed with chiropractors, physical therapists, occupational therapists, an office administrator, and ten experienced insurance billing clerks. Bills went to insurers regularly and in a professional format that guaranteed prompt payment. Khaled was surprised to find his wildest dreams fulfilled. He flew to London on the third of every month to be with and present gifts to his ancient parents. On each trip, to keep his hand in business, Khaled would report he injured himself on arrival at LAX. He never claimed injury in England since they would send him to a National Health Service hospital. The British insurers only gave up money for treatment in the U.S. The need to keep current with his business was what brought about Khaled's downfall. On his last trip back from Los Angeles, he accidentally and actually fell on the motorized walkway. He immediately sought treatment at one of the clinics he owned. Since he was not injured, the clinic administrator developed billing showing treatment that was consistent with the knee injury Khaled claimed. Instead of treating, Khaled tended to the details required of the owner of six treatment centers and two medical clinics. He forgot about his claim. He expected the money to gather, as always, in his business accounts. Khaled did not expect the curiosity and tenacity of an ex-metropolitan police inspector serving out his retirement with the English and North American Insurance Company in London. Kipper Johnson was 56 years old and loved catching insurance criminals almost as much as he loved his pork pies. Kipper could not understand how Khaled had managed in three years to injure his right and left knee seriously in two separate accidents at LAX, both times collecting more than $15,000 for each injury. Now he was asking for 5000 more for a CAT scan and orthoscopic surgery. It was time to call in Kipper's contacts in the U.S. Kipper had been a guest speaker at the convention of the International Association of Special Investigations Units, a group devoted to fighting insurance fraud, of the year before. 
He met a manager of the Special Investigation Unit of the U.S. sister company to the English and North American. The next evening, he telephoned and caught his colleague before he finished his second cup of coffee in the morning. Good morning to you, Doug, Kipper said to his contact since it was only 9.15 a.m. in Los Angeles. And good evening to you, Doug replied. How can I help an old copper? I need help with an unusual claim in your town. Remember, Doug replied, L.A. is the fraud capital of the U.S. No claim is unusual. Some are just more obviously dicey than others. Tell me about it. Kipper explained his suspicions to Doug in detail. Doug promised to see if his sources could help. He even assigned an investigator to search a computer database for information on Khaled and the clinics where he claimed he received treatment for his injuries. While Kipper finished his pork pie at the local pub, the data was received and analyzed by the investigator. A detailed report was prepared and attached to an email as a PDF document while he slept. The next morning, Kipper knew that Colette had been the victim of 22 automobile accidents, 12 trip and fall accidents in the last 36 months. He also learned that Colette was listed either as owner, officer, or director of each of the medical clinics he claimed provided medical service. Khaled was under investigation by several major insurers in the United States, but their inquiries being made to the district attorney drew no kindness from the local district attorney. Since every claim was less than $30,000, the prosecutor simply had no interest. After reading the attachment, Kipper was upset. Eight hours later, he called Doug and expressed fury. It's unconscionable, Kipper shouted. You know he's a fraud and there's nothing you can do. That does seem to be the case, Doug replied. I did learn something that might help you if English police have more desire to arrest white-collar criminals than our local police. No problem, friend Douglas. If I knew Khaled was coming to England, the information you have is enough to have the fraud squad of the Metropolitan Police pick him up. I have the information you need, Doug replied excitedly. He flies to Heathrow on United Airlines on the first Wednesday of every month and meets with his parents who live in Mayfair on Half Moon Street near Green Park. We've got him, Kipper replied. I'll get on to the fraud squad. On his next trip to London, Khaled found two policemen waiting outside his parents' flat on Half Moon Street. They arrested him on the spot, tried him at the Old Bailey, and sentenced him to three years in jail for defrauding the English in North America. With knowledge of the English trial, the Los Angeles District Attorney filed criminal charges against the administrators, chiropractors, and therapists at Khaled's clinics and confiscated $500,000 in cash and assets gained from his fraudulent activities. Khaled served his time. He did not dare return to California where multiple counts of insurance, fraud, mail fraud, and tax evasion awaited him. He lived in a small room at his parents' flat and now operates the cash register at the gift shop of the Hard Rock Cafe in London on Piccadilly, where he earns three pounds per hour. His life of crime ended. Sometimes Coeb proves that insurance fraud is not something that is easy to get away with. He failed. He spent his time in jail. He never try again. This video was adapted from my book, Insurance Fraud Costs Everyone, which is available as both a Kindle book and a paperback from Amazon.com. Thank you for your attention.